Good day everyone, I am Joseph of Digilitic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. Welcome to our course, Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm. In this lesson, we will learn about how to define probabilities in Python. At the end of the lesson, you're expected to describe probabilities in Python, identify the values of different probability measures using Python, and appreciate the roles of probabilities in machine learning. In our last lesson, we learned about the marginalization or marginalization. We learned that marginalization requires summation of all possible values of one variable to determine or to determine the marginal distribution of another. We also defined some terms that could help us widen our knowledge, and these are marginal distribution and nuisance variable. We also appreciated the value of marginalization in some probabilistic areas of machine learning. We mentioned that learning this is very inspiring and challenging, especially in making Bayesian inference. If you miss lesson 6, the link is given in the description below. Learning probabilities in mathematics itself is very challenging and applying the mathematics using python is even more challenging and exciting so this is what we're going to do in this lesson so for us to begin with we should install first some packages first so of course if you are or if you have already installed them you may skip this part of the lesson okay so the first thing to install is data science as the name suggests this library or package is intended for data science projects. Just to give you some backgrounds, the primary tools for explorations are visualizations and descriptive statistics. For prediction are machine learning and optimization, and for inference are statistical tests and models. Okay, the next thing to install is Prob140. So maybe what is maybe you would like to ask me what this one is? So basically, by the name itself, this package is for probabilities. So it is better if you have already installed Python, preferably version 3.5 or higher. So also better if you have already installed Anaconda. So if not, you may install it first. So anyway, just my suggestions. So here, you could see here I have imported warnings warnings that filter warnings then ignore so what is this one for so this part is not actually a part of calculating probabilities i have included it because i can see some warnings sometimes and i have to put them off to ignore them because they are very annoying to my eyes so i have to so everything is set and then now we are ready to dive into making distributions so the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to construct joint distributions. So we'll start by, of course, again, constructing a table. So we are going to call table.domain function with, with two lists. Okay, so we have our two lists. So this will create a table with x and y having those values. So later on, we're going to change these names. So this table here, if we're going to execute this code, then we, we will arrive at this output. So this table does not have the probability measures or values yet. So to fill this empty table or empty spaces, what we will do is that we're going to assign values using the function probability. So of course, okay, so of course, this is an explicit list of probabilities. So by executing this code, this results to a joint probability distribution. So here we can see the different values considering the given values. So we have discussed joint joint probability in lesson five so i suggest you watch it first if you would like to have a better and deeper understanding of this lesson so you may 
pause this video for a while then you can just come back if you're done with lesson number five so just to wrap up for for this one just to make a review of lesson number five so here it means that this is the value of y that's seven given the value of x so this is the result so this is the value of y which is equal to 7 given the value of x which which is equal to 2 so just like that easier so using x and y is not always the best practice to do to identify our variables properly so in defining our distributions we can always give a name to each random variable so here we can alternate between strings let me drag this one up so we could see properly so here we can alternate between strings and lists when calling so here when we execute this one or let me so you can see properly okay so these are the values so executing this code so we've changed the x to h1 and then h1 here and then y y here to h2 so now we've given the value for h1 which is 0 0.2 and then 0 0.8 for the second x just a while ago for this one without first the name of the variables so x the first x the value is one because the first x and then here is x is to which means the second x but in here we've given the respective values to h1 and then h the second h1 which is x2 just a while ago before the given of the giving of names then y here becomes h2 which is 2 h2 1 h2 0 okay so maybe you would like to ask about the 10 here so where this one came from so this is not actually a constant maybe it's because you could see 10 10 10 from the first one going to the last one maybe maybe you would tell yourself that this is a constant this is not actually the constant just for the purpose of this lesson and to give some kind of consistency to show some kind of consistency we use here 10 so that we could equate this table to this one and uh, the the value or the values would be the same so that's it that's it that's all about our joint distributions now let's move on to marginal distribution so we discussed marginalization in lesson six so if you do not have any idea about it you may pause this video for a while and come back if you're done with it so to see the marginal distribution of a variable what we will do is to call the marginal function where label is the string of the label this one okay this is the label which is also the string of the label so here we've or we have the marginal distrib distribution for h1 and then we have the marginal distribution for h2 so this is for the h1 and this is for h2 so as you could see here what matters most for us in this first table is the values of h1 so we are considering here the, the 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 columns and not the rows so in h2 we are considering the values of h2 that is per row so for h1 the values are 0.4 and then 0.6 and here we have the values 0.1 then 0.2 and then 0.7 okay so also if we would like to see the marginal distribution of h1 and h2 so we could properly uh, compare them so we could actually do that by using the both marginal 
function so as you could see here we have here h2 and then we have here h h1 okay so h2 values and here h1 values so remember that if you're going to sum here then the result is one is perfect perfect one and here's the result is perfect one i hope you still remember our equation in our lesson number two so if you're going to just to make a review if, if you're going to sum up all their probabilities we could always arrive at one okay so if it is if it's over one if it's more than one then something is wrong and that is really not correct okay so this time what we will do is that we're going to show a table a graph i mean a graph of each distribution or marginal distribution so this is the distribution or marginal distribution and the table for h1 and this is also the table for h2 so what is this one all about so making this kind of a plot is very helpful for us to generate smart insights out of data so this leads to making better decisions so that's why visualizations is actually very very important if we would like to see what's going on or at least we would have an overview of what's going on in the data because the data tells something about what's going on in the company in an organization okay so now let's go to conditional probabilities so now so still remember conditional probabilities so we learned about it in lesson number four so for better again for better understanding of this lesson it is better for you to check this lesson out so i always tell you to go back and then come back to go back and come back because our lesson this time is very much connected to our former lessons so which means if you failed to watch our lesson from day one until the previous lesson the tendency is that it would be more difficult for us to understand what's going on behind these different codes okay but if you already have some kind of knowledge and understanding about these numbers then it would be easier for you to understand what's really going on okay so to do conditional uh, distributions we're going to call the method conditional dist so we get the conditional uh, distributions of h1 with reference to h2 and h2 with reference to h1 so i guess you are wondering where these figures are from so in the first table the 0428571 is the result of dividing 0.3 by 0.7 this one 0.3 and then 0.7 so still remember our 0.3 and 0.7 so let me go back for a while so this is 0.3 and then this is 0.7 so as you could see what matters most here is the marginal distribution of h2 so in the second table here unlike our first table what matters most here is the marginal distribution of h1 okay so for example For example the value of 0.25 this one so how did we get 0.25 so this is the result of dividing 0.1 by 0.4 let me go back for a while 0.1 get this one so we divide we divide 0.1 by 0.4 and the result is 0.25 so that's it Okay, so, so this topic is our very is or this topic is very uh shall we say light this is just a light introduction to base algorithm so when we are already on this topic we're going to learn more about about this one data science 
often uses inferences. As what I have said, this lesson paves the way to better understanding of some machine learning algorithms like Navebase. This is very useful in making inferences, especially when you are tasked to know health issues and the best thing to do is, in many cases, is to make inferences. So after all being said and done, let's try this. This code is saved in my GitHub repository. You may play around with it, make probabilities, make interpretations. So using this code, you're going to make probabilities of any situations you may think of. The link to my GitHub is given in the description below. Then share with us your learnings by writing your findings in the comment below. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.